Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. As always, I'm joined by my man, my hero, my inspiration in life, Mr. Joe Cole. <laughs> JC. Technology genius. You forgot right. that one. Right, techno whiz kid. How are you, big man? You're all right. I'm I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. I did uh, the first mile of the lawn this weekend, which I feel good for. It's like... Did you? uh, Yeah, man. I went in early. It was beautiful weather. I thought, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to mow that lawn. And and you know what? I saw other people just take inspiration. That's what I love about when you you start mowing a lawn, right? You see see other people just look out and go, oh, no, I need to get out because otherwise it's a sign of laziness. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I, I, feel, I feel better for it. I, I, I need to up my lawn game this year. I'm going to be an embarrassing thing for you, right? I've never mowed a lawn in my life. Jeez. Is that bad? Yes, it's bad, Is Joe. Bad? Do you know as well, you could get like a really amazing lawnmower. Like, 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 let me say, I mean, I talked about this before and I so like, I don't want to cross podcast here, but I got the need, it's, it's the most aggravated I've ever been. I got my pants pulled down on a wired uh, lawnmower. I wish I'd gone wireless. I wish I had. Is, is it, I'd never had a lawn before. <laughs> and I got a, uh, and I got I've got Miss Sold a guy, a guy called Lee who works at Home Base. I still sort of got a need with him. But um, yeah, I, I, that's the dream. I want to sit on lo- lawnmower. Do you know what I mean? Like a little tractor type one where you can just like, yeah, that would be the nuts. That wouldn't it? This is, we need to up your. That's one thing I want to work out. Right? I think over like because like we chat football and we're close mates. We talk yeah. a lot. But I think I need to, like, like, like everything, yeah, we're going to get onto your football career and saying it. But I need to up your DIY, how, because you're, you're retired now, Joe. You need to be doing these retired jobs. Mate, I fixed my gate the other day, right? And the pride that I've, it was like Mate. I'd like won the Premier League again for the first time. I felt so happy. I rung my mum and told her. <laughs> Mate, when you get to our age, JC, I, I create so offence, and I can walk on like clouds for like I, I can I walk and like, and I'll tell everyone that I bump into for about a month. It's like oh mate, Chris, so the fence just there, uh, just like three weeks ago. It's an amazing feeling. You need to get that into yeah, your life. I, I do, I do. You're right. I mean, start simple. Put some pictures up. Yeah, that's another thing. I've never done that. It's bad. Jeez, JC. Bad. I when we're out of lockdown, I'm coming like, round and we're gonna do we're gonna do a I DIY thought, version of this. And our guest today, when I bring mate, him on, by the way, I, I'm I, I, he's I, a proper this, man. He's a man. He definitely man. does DIY. Like, yeah. he, and like, when I bring him man. on, it's yeah, he's got, he has an amazing yeah. Premier League career. But it's the first thing I'm gonna get stuck into with him. I I've met this guy before. I fancy the fact that he's done a little bit of DIY around here. I'll be mortified and heartbroken if he hasn't. I want to say it. Yeah, me too. JC, you've gone viral again this week. Uh, yes. <laughs> like, it's not like weekly now. You're becoming like an influencer. A couple of weeks ago, uh, it, it was um, the Masala Gate. And this week, yeah. uh, an old <laughs> quote from Stephen Gerrard has come out. Yeah. Where Stephen Se- Gerrard said, Joe Cole is better than Lionel Messi. That was in 2010. And it's, it's for some reason, it's come up again and it's just gone mad on on Twitter. Do you remember him saying that? Uh, yeah, I do remember him saying it. Like, and I thought, fucking hell, Stevie must have had a lot to drink before that interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. I think it's taken out of context. I think the original quote was, he could maybe do things like Messi. Do you know what I mean? Which you could attribute to lots of players. Nobody's Lionel Messi. Do you know what I mean? I'll have a little chuckle about it. But yeah, Stevie must have been on the heavy stuff, maybe the brandy or the whiskey that night. He, done, <laughs> he did own a bar outside of Liverpool at one point. He must have been, he must have had a great night saying that. Do you know what I mean, Tom, right? Because I'm I don't do the social media. I do, the Instagram I've got, and I pop in and out like and Terry looks after it. So I only find out about these things before everyone else. Like the the the, the Masala Gate last week, like I knew when I said it, I've made a rip there. They've yeah. definitely not named the most famous academy in world football after a chicken tikka. <laughs> but I couldn't stop myself. Like, I just couldn't stop myself. You know what I thought? Look, but you, you know what? You defended yourself with honour there. And, and in, in all fairness, Joe, as a big fan of yours, I can see the... Comp- and it's, we're talking this, as it said, in 2010. That's a decade ago. You know? And arguably, at that time, we didn't know the player that Lionel Messi was going to become. Do you know what I mean? It, I will say this, though. Yeah. For me, you are a better podcaster than Lionel Messi. <laughs> 
mate, no doubt about that, mate. We've got him in the bag. I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah are, you ready for, are you ready for that this week's guest? I can't wait for this week's guest. This week's guest is a he premier. Is a, he's, he's trouble, mate. I'll mate. tell you. He, he, uh, he give us more trouble. We, we, we played in Europe. We played against some of the top strikers in Europe. But this man give my, our Chelsea team nightmares. I think there's defenders who probably still have night, nightmares about this guy. Genuinely have nightmares about him. I remember, like, whenever we played, like, when, whenever West Ham played, you know, any, any time played against him, you you just thought, oh, mate. You, you almost felt sorry for the people playing against him just because just because what he brought to the game. And also, you sort of loved what he brought to the game and his story. And, and we're going to get into that today. So we've got a bona fide Premier League legend joining us. This gentleman's played more than yeah. 800 games in his career, which spanned over an incredible 21 wow. se seasons. Play for Southampton, Blackburn, Bolton, amongst others. I want you to put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. You might look bizarre doing this, walking down the street, or maybe you're in the sacred place of your own home. But give <laughs> some applause for Mr. Kevin Davies. Kevin, how are you doing? How are you, brother? I'm very well. How are you? Boys, all right? Mate. We're all right. Hello, Kev. How We're are good. you? Look, I'm good. I'm good. Before Can I just stop you there, Tom? Eight, 800 games? Yeah. 800 okay. games? That's unbelievable, mate. I think, yeah, I think it was. I think it was 800. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was something like that. 22, 22 years, I think, yeah. Wow. And you, I mean, before we get into football, Kevin, we've just been having a chin wag, and I know you've you've been privy to this. What And, and like, I've put my arm out there. Are you a DIY guy, Kev? I don't mind a bit, yeah. I don't mind a bit. I had the drains up this weekend. Getting all the drains <laughs> <on it. laughs> This is what I'm saying, JC. Look at Kevin yeah. David. 800 <laughs> games in this. Talking about lawns as well. I went off on one last last summer. We got a little strip of lawn. And it had it redone, raked, topsoil, seeded, and I put all this sort of like little um, like a little wire all up, zigzagged across it. Bought an owl, <laughs> little pretend owl to keep the birds off. I went for it last summer, lads. It's looking well, good now. Mate, so. It's. I'll tell you. We, have you ever? This is this is getting away from football, but I'm going to just throw it in. It might get cut. Have you ever heard of leather jackets before? Nah, not for me. Not I for had. Me. I. Had, what they, they're called leather jackets, but I had them on my front lawn. I had, like you, Kev, put a little bit of work into the front lawn, thought it looked amazing. And these like little bugs come in and they eat away below your lawn. So ev all your grass just dies. Just literally, I went out one morning and I thought, the sun's got to that. That's crazy. The whole lawn had gone. It was absolutely bizarre. Um, What's a leather jacket got to do with it? I don't know. That's what they called them, <laughs> leather jackets. Is this a football uh, or a gardening podcast? <laughs> is Charlie Gimmick coming in as well? What's going on here? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I might start, I might get old Alan Titchmas on the, on the phone for next week. That's it, get him on, get him on. I mean, we, there's so much to talk about. Um, I, I, I think you first, the first time I remember you sort of coming to prominence was, was at Chesterfield, the cut run. Um, what season, what, what would that have been? Sort of 96, 97? 97, 98, that one, yeah. I think it was uh, Sean Dyche, captain, John Duncan, manager, Um Good squad of players. So I went there. It's, I got released from Sheffield United at the age of 16 when I left school, which is pretty tough. Dave Bassett was the manager, and then Chesterfield just picked me up, League Two. Um, went from there. I was in the first team after a few games. So I was quite, you know, for a 16 year old, I was quite developed and tough. Growing up on the big council estate in Sheffield, I could handle myself really. So I was always playing with the older boys and getting knocked around a bit. So quickly in the first team there, but brilliant squad of players. And we got to that semi final, 2 0 up, as, you know, measuring the suits up a little bit at one stage and then. It's against the great Middlesbrough team, you know, Ravinelli and Janino, Emerson. Um, brilliant, brilliant cup tie. Went to the semi, which we unfortunately lost, but that was a great, great team we had there, yeah. Kev burst on the scene at Chesterfield, but it was um, with Southampton after that, and, and he scored some goals. Was it Southampton after that, Kev? Straight yeah, away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, again, that was kind of being thrust into the Premier League, 20 years old, going from League Two, League One, where I sort of learnt my apprenticeship really uh, you know people like Sean Dyche in the dressing room keeping you grounded great manager who was like a father figure and you know two or three of us got decent moves off the back of that cup run um, and I remember going down to Southampton packing my suitcase out of the loft kind of thing um, and signing deal Graham Soonest was the manager actually but left that summer and then it was just a case of going in and again just unfazed by it all kind of back yourself you know the confidence in yourself um, you know done it the hard way kind of thing and just hit the ground running really did in the Premier League from I think it was getting player of the month, goal of the month. There was one against Everton, which was live on Sky. You know, it really catapulted me into the into the limelight a bit, really, from a young age. So, loved it. But just, I remember going to, like, you know, Chelsea and looking across and seeing Zolas and just pinching yourself a little bit under the lights. It was just amazing. I loved it. Loved every moment of it, really. 
Because there must have been a lot of like, yeah, he's had this great cup run. And we've seen that before. We've seen players who had great cup runs. Then, they, then they've got to jump up a few leagues. And do they? Make, and you certainly made the grade. You came in and you're like, mm. "Wow, this guy." Was there any ever any doubt for you, or was it like, "No, I'm going to smash this"? No, I think again, it was just coming from my upbringing. Really, it wasn't afraid of anything. I think we, when you, me and Joe, seen it when you've got a bit older and you've got experience and you're seeing young kids burst on the scene and they're playing without fear. You know, they've not had the careers and the setbacks and all those kind of, you know, lacks of confidence and things. You just go and hit it. Um, and I think, you know, as a young player in Sheffield, a big city, I was, was always one of the better players. I always backed myself as a, a good player. I think, obviously, my game developed over the years with Bolton, etc. cetera. Um, but just, yeah, it just didn't phase me at all. It was a great squad again going into Southampton. Dave Jones came in as manager. You know, we had Matt Letizia in there. It was just unbelievable. We had a really good squad of British players, and it was just a good, fun place to go and play every day. So, yeah, I had a great sort of first half of the season and then I think I picked up an injury around Christmas time against Man United. I think I scored the winner 1-0 and just the rest of the season struggled but went to Blackburn after one season there. So it's kind of, I think I was sold for 750 grand from Chesterfield to Southampton and then went for 7.5 million a year later. Kev, when you, um, you say like what an amazing group of like, you know, those sort of British uh, players you had in that Southampton team, obviously with Letitia included. Was your team building, was it sort of like, were you out quite a bit? Was it sort of quite a sort of... Yeah, yeah we... we um, there was, I think I heard Andy Townsend talking about, there was, there was, you know, the drinking culture was still around. I think Wenger started to come in in the you know, late 90s, whenever it was, and started to make it a bit more professional, but we're still very much around it at Southampton. Um, you know, we used to have this, you know, drink on a Saturday... We lived on the marina, you know, we had Carlton Palmer, David Erse, some good sort of drinkers in there. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it was literally an all-day Sunday. James Beattie came down, David Howes, they had a big £150,000 yacht on the water. You'd be out wow. and about on that, having a drink on a Sunday, you know. You'd come back to the apartments and there'd be people queuing up outside your apartment to get in for the Sunday night party and then train Monday morning, you know. It was kind of, that was a weekly occurrence. And then I think we were young, you know. You come back on a Monday, you're home by one o'clock. It was kind of, what should we do today, lads? I had a couple of the younger boys living with me as well. He'd go down the bar and had a few beers. That'd be an all day, a train Tuesday, a bit. Oof. And, you know, Wednesday off and then prepare for the game. It was a bit like that, to be honest. And I was playing some, like, unbelievable football as well. It was crazy. But we, again, I think Andy was on about the team spirit that came with it. It was just brilliant, great squad of players. And I think the manager, you, you know, he knew what was going on, but he let us, he let us go with it. He just built that team spirit. We had some great... Carl and Palmer, big character in there, you know. Yeah, yeah, we had Carl and again, he, could, he could have a full all day, you know, be dancing up and down poles two or three in the morning. And then the next day, he'd be at the front of the running. It's crazy how he did it. Absolutely crazy, man. Do you, do you think that's that sort of side of it? And you, you talk about that as a young guy joining sort of like that sort of, I suppose, older sort of legends of the game. Do you think that's missing a bit now? Or do you think the game's better for it? Or, or where do you stand with that? I feel like pretty blessed that I had kind of half my career where that was going on, so probably till my mid twenties. So so early two thousand, it start. You know, I went to Bolton two thousand and three, and the science was starting to come. You know, afternoon training sessions, and you know, maybe different to Joey. He was at some bigger clubs than me, where it's probably different to to a Bolton and a Southampton, maybe. But you know, that was kind of going on. It started to fizzle out because you know the camera phones came, the attention in the papers. You couldn't yeah. really get away with it as much, and I think. Obviously, the maturity side of it as well. You get into your mid twenties. I, I had kids on the way as well. You start to have to settle down a little bit and stop doing all that kind of stuff. And you can't do it anyway. The hangovers are terrible now, aren't it? it takes about a oh, week man. to get over Jeez. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I think it was good for the the team bonding. You know, again, Sam at, at Bolton liked a, a night out with the boys, liked a night out with the, you know, the couples and things, and it just built that team spirit. I think it's vital, really. and I feel sorry for. Kind of the players now, yes, they earn amazing money, but they couldn't quite enjoy it as much as we did. I don't think at the top level, at the top level, it's tough. Joe, your Wi-Fi is jumping all over the place. Uh, that video is that is awfully grainy. It's like you're, you're calling from 1983. Uh, so we're going to stick up a holding image of you, uh, and it's a holding image of you from the first year you played at West Ham. It's my favourite version of Joe Cole. <laughs> it's my favourite as well, mate. Um, a lot more hair. Yeah. Lot more here. You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. I've been with my wife now 45 years. We're, we're childhood sweethearts. We've been together since we were 16 and 15. Oh, come on, Joe. You're starting to make me cry now. What's yeah. up with you? Jeez, well, that's, that's the intention, Alan, to make you all cry. <laughs> Check out the full video now to find out why Joe is Alan's next winner. Did, um... Kev, you know your Bolton days, would you say that that spell was was 
your peak years? I think so. I think, you know, I again, it was one of those. I left Southampton. Um, 2003, Gordon Strachan came in. For, I didn't play for a year. He just wasn't having me. Again, that was going to a bit of the drink culture when he came in on a Monday morning. He could smell the booze on the boys and he just clamped it down a little bit. And I was one of the first to get fined and didn't hit it off really with him. So I knew I was on my way out there. And Sam's had a bit of a habit of picking players up, you know, like a, a lad's due for someone who lost the way a little bit. Um, so he took me on trial there. And listen, I, I started every game the first season, player of the year, got to cup finals. We get into Europe and it just clicked. With with Gordon Kevin, what what how how does that come about and how did you because because obviously you're sort of like flying at Southampton, you've done well at Black yeah Blackburn, you're back there at Southampton. How does that go about? Like you know, all of a sudden you're you're not playing, and that maybe that's not of your doing. The fact that the culture that you're the culture's changing, maybe the managers come in. How do you deal with something like that with with, with Gordon? It was tough really because I I looked at the other players that there was a Brett Allman rod, there was obviously James Beat. When I came back from Blackburn, I had a year there and I signed a seven-year contract with Blackburn. But I did a year there. We ended up getting relegated. Well, she got sacked. Brian Kidd. It was just a horrible, toxic sort of environment, something I wasn't really used to. Um, didn't click, you know, the young boys, lots of new players. I hated it. Um, so when the chance came to go back, I, I jumped at it, went back and signed another two and a half, three-year deal, I think. So I, I loved the club and I didn't quite get to the heights of that first season with Southampton, but um, Gordon Strachan came in. We had Glenn Hoddle in there as well before. Um, he came in after Dave Jones. Again, very good tactically and stuff, but my management wasn't so great. Um, he left to Spurs and then Gordon came in and it was just from the day one. I think I took a two-week fine wage. I think he's kind of made an example of me and put his rules down, put his stamp on things. And just, I think I played two games that year. It was tough. Got to the cup final, left out the squad. And it was kind of see you later kind of thing. So it was difficult. It was difficult. But uh, just, again, it was just, you know, back yourself to come back and do it. And I think I scored the winner for, for Bolton the following season, late on in the season. 2-1 down there and just sort of proved oh, the point, really, I guess. I bet that was sweet. That's always yeah, sweet was, when you yeah. do that. I don't think I had a kiss of the badge as well. It's getting embarrassing, but... Uh... Does that does that leave a bit of a bitter taste in your mouth? Just that one guy and the way he's treated you, is that then, then, does that have a sort of bearing on how you feel about the club or is it just... No, no I just feel, yeah. not about the club. I love the club. And listen, I'm, listen, I'm living back down this way now, not too far away. Go back there for games and TV. I, it's a brilliant football club and I think I've... Quite blessed that all the clubs I played for have been good, including Blackburn. It didn't work out for me that year. I've got nothing against them. Great football club. Jack Walker was amazing. Um, but, you know, some managers you just face doesn't fit. And I think you kind of have to use it as a driver, really. And that's if I'm working, you know, I'm a football agent now. So working with some of the younger boys or, you know, you're doing a Zoom chat with an academy at Bolton or Chesterfield, which I do. You just say don't let one person's opinion affect you because it's one coach, isn't it? I remember being on the table with uh, Dave Bassett. We was at a big doing London HMV Awards or something, and Dave was across. There was all the old boys on there, you know. And he just went. I don't even miss it. He went, "Who, who let you go? Who's the manager at Sheffield United when they let you go?" I went, "It was you, Dave." He was like, <laughs> and that, "Right, and all, you know, there's all the boys in there." Yeah. <laughs> but Kevin, you, I, I'm guaranteeing, right? You said that, and then you had a good supper lager. Like, oh, that was God, you. Yeah, we had a good day. Yeah, it was classic. It was classic. And he was like, well, it was the UT manager. I was like, was John Dunger. He was like, right, yeah, right. But, uh, You know, I don't hold grudges. I think I've seen Gordon on a couple of, you know, it's just his decision. I've been a manager myself and seen a little bit not to that level, but it was his decision. I think I went to Black, uh, to Bolton and, and proved, you know, I had another nine, ten years in the Premier League. Are you one of those players, that, as a West Ham fan, I was like... I used to know I against West Ham, didn't I? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. crazy. Yeah, mate. You I don't know if Joe's... I don't know what it is. People ask you, why is it you always score against them or Villa? And I don't know if Joe had a team. It's kind of... I don't know if it's Matty Upson who's like, oh, here we go, Matty. Really today, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, did you not have the fire in it. <laughs> did you have that fit? Because, I mean, that first se season, so you finished eighth, didn't you? A League Cup final. Yeah. You, you know, uh, did, but did you relish that that playing for Bolton and as Joe's saying about Ashley Cole, did you relish the fact that you're this hard guy from Sheffield, you've been through your knocks, and you did you relish the thought of thinking about a player thinking, oh no, I've got to, I've got to play against Kevin Davies and he's gonna did you love that side of it? I think so. I think it was a mentality that Sam brought to the club, I think. Um it just kind of clicked. I ended up playing up top and then we had likes of Jufi, you know, Stelios, Jorke F, Kocha in the middle, Campo. And we had some quality players and we had a bit, we were tarnished with this route one. But I remember going in after sort of 10 games, I had an appraisal with the club. With Sam Sad had amazing staff around him, you know, give us the best opportunity to be the best players we could be by stats. You know, we put pros owning, we were doing ice baths, we would 
the diet, you know, he, he was, you know, he wanted all this source of information to give us and him the best opportunity to succeed, really. So he surrounded himself with top people. Well, when he left, they all left all the top clubs, but he created that. And we just loved putting, a few, we loved the bloody nose, really. So Liverpool come in, Man United, Chelsea, you know, it, Man City came and we just top them, top them with one we used to just bully. Um, and Sam loved it. Sam loved it on the sidelines and, he, you know, he'd be in the dressing room saying, you know, he's going to put the marker down and he'd be sort of staring at me a little bit or, or Kev Nolan or someone, you know. And we, just, we loved it. We loved that underdog mentality a little bit. I remember you against Arsenal. It was like, it must have been you, the mindset of your team as opposed to the mindset of that Arsenal team, particularly after 2006 when they started to go really technical. Yeah. You just used to bully them, didn't you? It was like, I remember having a little chuckle to myself on Match of the Day just thinking, look, Bolton have at it again. They just like they they had Arsenal in the palm of their hands, and Wenger would be yeah. pulling his hair out, and Sam would just be chuckling next to him. Just, they just couldn't deal with you, could they? Arsenal. It was particularly at home and Liverpool as well around the time. It, you know, we had the battles with Julier and Wenger. He he loved it as much as we did, and I think you know, give us a bit of credit because we could play as well. We had players in there. Well, that's the thing. That, that's football, that's the thing. But, that, uh, but also, you, you look at the fixtures and you look around. You know, it's going to be winter time or Tuesday night in Bolton. The weather's terrible. And you look at them, you think, mm, are they really fancying it? Because they lost that spine, Arsenal, didn't they? You know, Vieira, Petit, Adams, Keogh, you know, that horrible, yeah. tough, gritty 1-0 team. They lost that. They never replaced it, have they, really? So we, we played on that. We loved it. But when you say about that that roughness and the sort of like, you know, you had that, you know, and, and I think I think as well, you're sort of, I think I think you as a player, Kev, is you sort of, it's a disservice to talk about you. You know, you could have it. But technically, I remember watching you a number of times and you actually, you know, you touch and, and, and you go into a place where you're playing with JJ Okocho, who for me, I remember seeing him for PSG. I remember sort of seeing him for Nigeria. What, like, I remember him being buzzing, yeah. him signing, Yuri Jokef. What was the secret of getting those guys? Jo- Jokef was the key, I think. And Sam's, you know, still in touch with Sam and seeing a few, uh, you know, presentations from him. Jokef was the key. He's the first big one on the hook. And I think... Rather than bring him to Bolton, no disrespect to Bolton Town Centre and, you know, the new stadium, he, he went to meet him in Paris, did a fantastic presentation. Obviously, the money was pretty good, sold him the dream. You know, I think mean, we had a decent training ground was being built. So, you know, we were on the way up, really, and he bought into it. And I think Sam, again, got him. And then it was a case of the others following suit. Campo, you know, some of the players you named there, brilliant. But we had a, we had a little core of the British sort of mentality in there as well. But I think it, we, Nakata came, we had all these players. You know, Jardel came in from South America. It's crazy. At one time, we had about eighteen different nationalities, but everyone had to speak English, and we all got on and we worked hard for each other. It was a great squad, and I think you know the players that have won major, you know, tournaments. Stelios won the Euros. O four came back. We all like, oh, brilliant, you know. And we just had a real, like, really tight connection within the group. And when Sam left, that kind of all just started to to go downhill, and you see where they are now, really. How was the culture shock for them though when they signed for Bolton? How was the, like? <laughs> they loved was it. There... Honestly, yeah, they loved it. They loved it. I think you know JJ came and you could see he had all his washing up in the tree and in the back garden and <laughs> everywhere in the house. And I think people just loved because we created this like environment. And Sam had you know player liaisons who just took care of houses and schools, and the boys were just allowed to get their head down and concentrate on football. So you see some players taking a bit of time to sell. We the players just hit the ground running. We had a brilliant sort of team spirit and Sam sort of managed that and the staff and the players all got on and we had, you know, social at the right time and we just, it was just a great work ethic. You know, we played hard and we worked hard together kind of thing, so. Kev alluded to it there when he talks about player liaisons and settling in. Can I tell you a story about when I signed for um, Chelsea? We talk about transition of eras. Um, I signed on the <laughs> same day as Verón. We had a masser called Hamzy um, who used to be a, he was a black cab driver as well. So they sent him to Heathrow Airport to pick up Verón. So he thinks he's being picked up. Oh, going to the London Club, black cab driver. He's going to drop me off at the stage. So he's, Verón's, me and Verón are going to the, in, into the training ground. And he's gone off and asked about to the physio, like, oh, I've just done a bit of work. Can I have a bit of a massage? So he, if Verón's thinking it's going to be some geezer, the black cab driver's turned up to massage him. He's like, he's come from Lazio, where they've probably got about 10 massas. And Chelsea was very... At the start of the thing, Chelsea was so like Harlan. And I remember when I started, we had to um, we had to leave the training ground at, at 1.30, 2 o'clock because the the local hockey team was taking it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it was taking the pitch to train. I swear. And I'm looking at it thinking, there's Marcel Desailly, 
And there's like Juan Veron, and we've all got to get off because some geezers from Hayes are playing in the local hockey league. It's uh, mental. I got a good one on a taxi driver as one as well. I think we'd uh, I think we'd be up for the PFA Awards Saturday, Sunday, all day, you know. And Monday morning, it's like get a cab back to Southampton. I was like, you know, seven o'clock or whatever it was. You're like, oh, this this guy picks me up, and he's you know he looked like he's been on like a three day shift. He was like giving it all this. And we're down the M3, and he's like, give me that one. I'm like, <laughs> I think we were like a D-Rage D- Astra or something. And I'm like, I, can, look, I see you're all right. Yeah. So we waited for five minutes. I thought he was going to, so I went, do you want me to drive? And he pulled onto our shoulder, got in, put the seat back, went to sleep, and I drove the taxi into, into the door. I'm going in like this. Now I've been on it all weekend. And I'm saying to the boys, watch this. And I pulled in like this. And they're like, he went, that's 60, 70 quid. I went, you having a laugh? I drove this taxi all the way back. I was like, what am I doing? You know what I mean? Those were the days, eh? Who's the best you played with at Bolton, Kev? JJ in terms of ability, I think. I mean, I I remember going pre-season and in the little five-a-side, you want to be on the same team as him. So you could just make it look stupid. You you, you couldn't see the ball and he was past you and he'd be like, you know, don't worry, Kev. But just a really humble guy as well. He was was a captain, but, but strong as well. You couldn't knock him off the ball. Uh, but great guy, you know, we have a bit of snooker after training, a bit of pull and a bit of darts and stuff, just a top guy. But in terms of ability, he was class. And obviously, an elk who came in as well, another level of a striker. And, you know, he's coming in, you're thinking, is he taking my place? But, you know, I got shifted out to the right a little bit or he played off the left. Him and uh, Jufi, we had a we had a good sort of set of players, really. So we had some good ones. Hierro came in, but again, great with the young players and coming in here and just passing on all that knowledge. Some some great characters. Yeah. Campo, Campo would turn up every pre-season, big time, you know, curly hair, putting on about half a <laughs> stone, right? Like, you know, this is what pre-season's for kind of thing. It's, it's good. It's good fun. <laughs> <laughs> with, with you, Joe, who was the one when you signed for Chelsea where you look at now? I mean, what was it like? Because Veron... Vaughn was a remarkable player for like Argentina uh, and, and over in Italy. He was, he was he was a real quality. What was that like with, with you when you signed on the same day as him? Oh, I mean, it's, listen, I was a, I was, I was an afterthought. Chelsea was signing everyone, and um, Veron was a big signing. And um, Veron turned up with like four or five Italian agents who looked like they was in Reservoir Dogs, like all the gear <laughs> on the shades. And you I'm just got a big tail. Old, <laughs> no, nah, Big Tail went on the scene then. Um, <laughs> but I was, with, I was I was with my old man, and um, he just turned up in a in a, like a, a tracksuit, and like you know, West Ham was you know d- d- press there was press conferences were wasn't a thing done at West Ham. I don't think you know if if Harry if you spoke to the journalist, you sat down in the canteen with him, and Harry just brought him in and sat you down, and you had a cup of tea and you had a chat. And then it was actually my fifth one. Apart from England, it was like my first press conference at a club. So it was just I'm just sitting there. I might as well have been the fella making the bringing out the waters or the, or the teas for the people on because there was all questions for Verum. And uh, but he was a he was a, you're right. He was a remarkable player. But what what a, what a gentleman as well. What a lovely guy. And uh, I see him when I was playing for Tampa Bay Rowdies. Uh, he, we played a friendly against his team about it must have been two years ago. And he was coming out of retirement at like forty two at Independiente in Argentina. I had a good chat with him then, but um yeah, great guy for Rom. And a, one of <laughs> one of the best players I've trained with. It just didn't work for him in England. But one unbelievable ability. Was there anyone like that at Bolton who it didn't quite work for? Because it sort of everyone felt like they were, you know, successful and it, there was a, you know, was anyone well, the old boys Vast Tay. Vast Tay. Oh him. yeah. Yeah, he's, he was like, I mean, I was looking back when you went, won the playoffs with Big Sam, was it 2012? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I was in Vegas with his wife, and not just with his wife, but with my wife as well, but <laughs> with the family. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <really great. laughs> Revelations! Of of the, the, the world! No <laughs> wonder he didn't do well! Bloody hell! Yeah. Well, no wonder he got rid of you there, Kev. I know, yeah. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> I remember, you know, Lynn pacing around the pool, and I was winding up saying, is there like a penalty gone in? And she was like, no, we had a, we just been relegated. So it wasn't great for the Bolton, but uh, we had a couple of glasses of champagne when I say scored the winner, didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, he yeah. was he was one of those who were the best, he was the best in training. You think, oh, yes, you see it. Didn't quite get the run in the team there. Um, but I think he'd done all right for you boys, didn't he? And he was okay didn't. with Big Sam, though. I mean, would you say that that was a strength for you for Big Sam? Was it that man management or was it the team management? What was the thing that really man management, yeah. I think. 
just little things that he, you know, the appraisals every 10 games, you'd go in and you'd have all this. It's, what he did is, we had like, you know, the team photos at the start of the season, there'd be like 25 staff, like 22 players. He's just surrounded himself with the best people. We had guys coming in who were giving us all the acupuncture and beetroot shots, which people were talking about three years ago, we were doing, you know, all the oil, the fish oil tablets, the strength, the power that we were in the gym. You know, it was all kind of unheard of. The, the pro zone, the stats came in and he could slap it on your, you say, that's why you're not playing or that's why you're playing. It's, you come out of an appraisal, you say, look, you've been involved in 78% of the goals or whatever. And you think, oh yeah, I'm not bad actually. I just yeah. feel like, you know, just little things. His man management was superb. He, he would come into his own towards the end of the week, you know, Thursday, Friday, tactically start moving us around. He had Phil Brown, uh, Phil Brown, Sammy Lee doing a lot of the coaching during the week, but tactically then he'd start to come in his own on the training ground. But just good fun, you know, you'd have met him, I'm sure. Great, great company, great on the yeah, social. Yeah, yeah, we've both well, you know, met him, it's so great. Yeah, he's, yeah. Got, he's up against it this season though, isn't he? A little bit, eh? What were the team talks like? Were they, were they, was he a calm, you know, because like you say, he's up against it now. And But, but what, you know, was he fiery? Was he sort of like chilled? How, how did he go about it? Was it too bad? I can't think. There was not too many. I think it was one. You know, the next day when you've underperformed or something, and you're in the analysis room, and he comes in, you could just see you like, oh god, someone's going to get it, kind of thing. And he'd let rip, and he just he did it at the right time, really. But other than that, it was just a good place to go in and work every day. He gets the best out of you. The staff, you know, everyone was in it together. He'd bring all the surrounding staff in around Christmas, Christmas grottos for the kids and presents. Just felt a good place to work every day. That's why I didn't want to leave, really. You know, it's just a good club. I love the form of Big Sam dressed as uh, Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. yeah. Joe, for you that you had that, do you think that was Chelsea for you that, that you had that sort of... Yeah, I think it was, Tom. And I think it's, it goes down to the fact we was all... I think the age of us at the time was all sort of early 20s to mid-20s. Well, I was there seven years when I so right away through my 20s. So you had that camaraderie because you... you you know, we you're out and about and doing it, you know, and you're in London and it was it was great and we all was winning things and it just, you know, like you, it's say it's similar to Bolton in the sense that you had a few good young young lads, English characters, and then you had all these great foreign talent coming in. You brought them in, but you had that core and you brought them in. They under they understood what it meant at the club at the time, out of the, you know the standards that had to be there on the pitch, but we also had a good time off it. But early on at West Ham, that was, I loved all of it, to be honest. Even to bloody Tampa Bay Rowdies at the end of it was like great. That was probably the best social time. It was fantastic. <laughs> Living on the, in, in, like, I loved it, mate. I loved all, all, my te- all my team. The only time I struggled to settle within a group of players was, what was, it, was at Liverpool, mate. And I don't know why that is. I just didn't click with, I didn't have a place in the dressing room. Do you know what I mean? It was a weird yeah. one, really. Uh, that's the only club I've been to where I haven't settled. Even when I was in France, c- couldn't speak a word of the language, but I had a whale of a time. Do you know what I mean? I they just, you know, proper Del Boy, like proper Del Boy French was going on there. Let me tell you, it was all sorts of proper. You didn't off. get a French accent, did you? Um, <laughs> no, I did not. I, I, <laughs> I had a, I'll tell you what I did do. I had a, a local cafe I used to go in every day and um, spit the geezer, mess about with the geezer, like a bit of French, like when I'm ordering my croissant or my coffee or something. And, like, and he's like, oh, you're learning, good game at the weekend, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I got, as a, uh, my mate come over and as the months went on, I said, listen, when he co- I've told him I'm fluent in French in six months. <laughs> so when I come in, I'm just going to say every word I say in French, you just say some French words back to me for about five minutes. And um, he was like, so I'm just waffling, saying everything, you know, counting and like my mates. Now you speak French in six months. You know, I didn't. I, I thought you was thick. You've done it. You've cracked it. I said, my pal was like, he left. We left the cafe. My pal was thinking I'm a fluent in in French <laughs> after six months. It was, it was good. Oh, but, yeah, it was only the Liverpool dressing room I didn't settle in. So I don't know why. It's an interesting. One of my favourite things, like looking at. Your career as well, Kev, is like throughout the seasons you played there. I think you were like the most foul player, uh, the most fouls given against you and the most foul player like at the same time, right? Something like that, yeah. I, I don't know, that just, I, I, that's just a side that kind of evolved and all those sacks came out. I guess it's just the nature of the, the way that I played, really. I was physical, I like to compete, I like to, you know, I, I remember playing against Joe was saying there, John Terry used to love the battles against him. You know, he went off on the stretcher once and stuff. And but we'd have a beer afterwards, you know, he'd give me some boots for the charity, he used to run and stuff, and it was great. Yeah. Whereas 
you go up against a village and he'd scream a little bit when you hit him or something and won't shake your hand after the game. It's a bit kind of like that. Yeah. So I like, I like, you know, I guess that's going back to the Chesterfield days, League Two, League One. You know, you have a good battle on the pitch, have a few beers with the opposition and you're on your way kind of thing. So I guess I miss that kind of that kind of camaraderie or the battles and stuff. And I just I just carried on doing it, I suppose. But um I just I don't know, the tackles, the, the physicality, I had picking up injuries, I had a few fractures along the way, you know, played with a broken cheek, broken hand, broken toe, broken ribs, just carried on. I loved it. So <laughs> fresh all for pain was pretty, pretty good, I think. <laughs> <laughs> who was the who was the toughest centre half who like uh, you played against? I, I, I think John Terry again. I think um it was just a battle. I mean, it's two proud men going at it, I think. Mutual respect. Um so I always enjoyed that. I think Gary Cahill played with him training at Bolton. He just one that just became strong and tough. Um had a brilliant career as an old Gary Cahill. He was uh, he was he was tough and he trained like he played, you know. He had a few collisions on the pitch where you think, oh, one of us is going to come worse off, but that's the way he was. Um, just ambitious to get yeah. to the top. So, yeah, I think John, John, I loved it. I loved the battles with John. There were, there were some good ones. Do you, how much, like when you're training and you've got players like you, Kevin, and when when it comes to someone like yourself, Joe, how many players, like, how many, in training, do you get players who, who really are like, you're like, oh, f- he's off. In terms of what players like giving it, smashing you up, at, yeah, putting their foot up, putting you yeah. up in the air. Mate, I think it's a, um, I think it's a must for any successful team. Tom, I think of now I've finished my career. I look back at the teams that were successful relative to what, relative to what was, you know, for instance, like Chelsea could win the league, you know, when I was in Lille, uh, Lille and teams relative to where they could do success. What success was one of the things that was non-negotiable was like training was a bit naughty at times, especially. It, all the all the successful teams, players left their foot in, it got heated, there was a little bit of argy bargy, and the teams were a bit milky and a bit flaky. Training mm. was a bit wishy washy as well, and it weren't like that, you know. So um yeah, I would say that I'd i I'd say I'd say probably my Chelsea team was was the toughest, uh, in t- in in that sense, yeah. So referee wise, Kev, did you have any <laughs> bad what well, your relationships like with the referees did you get on with them were you... I get on better with them now I see them now they're all oh god you're, a, you're hard work when you <laughs> I'll tell you my worst was Clattenburg Clattenburg oh god he had it in for me and uh, I, I felt it became a bit personal with him I was really? getting yellow cards and he's booking me I think it stemmed from a game one of my f- first few games at Bolton I was getting kicked up in the air and eventually give a foul to me. And I went, <laughs> And he went, bang, yeah. And I was like, all right, okay. From that moment on, I scored a late winner against Fulham. I think we were, we got, the good times had gone. We were starting to, you know, it was Megson era, kind of going call era. And I scored a late winner, got a bull angle, and it was a, your size, Tom, and scored. And it was like, oh, it had taken us up like six, six places away. And he, he disallowed it for a shove. And I was like, oh, yeah. You know, it was my, I think it was my three hundredth game for them or something. So I had kicked off about him after, and I got sent to a hearing. Um, I think it was at Man City's ground. There's two or three of us in there. We misbehaved or whatever in front of a panel. Like, sorry, you know, I <laughs> said what I said. It was a slap on the wrist, twenty thousand fine or something. And then I seen him in Linicus. We were on a, it. Was I think it was when was the American World Cup? We were mm. we were all in Marbella. Um, and someone said Clap. We were in Linicus. Someone said Clattenburg. You know, we went, where we've been on it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's there at the bar, got him in the headlock, and messed all his head for <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> What did he do? What did he do? He's like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, he's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> he's always there, messing with his Oh, God, yeah. I love the fool that he's probably setting his tab because someone's going to be Kevin Davies is in here. He's like, oh, oh no. Get a little jab in the ribs. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> have you, have you <laughs> seen him since? Not really, no. Not really. Let's just get the yellow and move on. Sorry, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> that must have been that must have been up there with any goal oh, you scored. God, yeah. I was like, well, where is he going? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd love to have been there for that. That's maybe my favourite story. Then, oh, <laughs> imagine yeah. being a ref. Like, how can you go out to places? Because you must have upset everyone. Yeah, at I some think he point. Loved it, didn't you know he? what I mean? He, like, loved it, he did. Yeah, Clattenburg yeah. did. Yeah. Because even even fans, if they saw him, there's not anyone getting a picture of. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, God, he loved it. Yeah. Right, Kev. One of mine and Joe's favourite bits of the show. What really happened? Okay, so 
the big one we've had for you is um, your time at Bolton. Uh, your running feud with you basically had a single man running feud with Man United, right? You got on the wrong side of Fergie, wrong side of Evra. Um, Evra's and um, Patrice is someone I know. I, I, I know him really well, Patrice. But and, and I find him a lovable guy. But then I've had this. This, this is my favourite quote. I had more bad tackles in that game than I've had in my entire career. His first tackle on me should have been a red card. It was the same last year when Davies kicked me. I said to him, "Why do you tackle like that?" And he said, "It's because I don't like you." <laughs> that's, the, that's, that, that's quite polite isn't it uh, <laughs> I, I don't know whether Patrice bless him as, as, as sort of like I don't know that. I just, that one seemed to just evolve I think there's always Bolton Man U is always one of the first to look for you know and I think Fergie used to play all the games and we just we just fired up for it we know what it meant to our fans and between me and him I don't know if it's he's quite small he beat me in the air once and it pissed me off a little bit I don't know what it was something must have wrote me into and I've I've seen a couple of the tackles and they weren't the best tackles, but it just it just carried on into every game. I don't know I don't know how, but I did see him. Um, we were on a night out in Manchester with a few of the couples and things, and we were in this bar and he started walking in. I was like, oh here we go. He had a few of his boys around him. I just blocked, so he couldn't come in. I went, you're not coming in, mate. Like you know, trying to be all. I mean, I'm not joking. I'm not that. You know, I'm a nice guy. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. I'm a beer. He had one beer and left. I think. But, uh, I, listen, I, on the pitch and off the pitch, I think I'm two different people. I, I think most people think I'm a decent bloke off the pitch and stuff. But on the pitch, you know, it's you know, especially those derbies, you just got to give your all, haven't you? And it gets a bit feisty. I think he had three straight reds and about 150 yellows. So if over 800 games, it's not too bad, is it? If you think about no. it, you know. No, but did you? Did you set out in those games to go, like, you know, you say about that, I mean, when you're playing up against Ashley or Patrice and you're playing off the right there a bit, did, did you set out thinking you're in for it now? I think you've got to set, you've got to try and set, I mean, Sam would always be kind of, who's, you know, someone's got to set the tone and he'd be probably staring at me a little bit. There's a tackle against, my best tackles against Man City after about four seconds from the kickoff live on Sky, kicked <laughs> off, bang, it's gone to collar off and I've gone like a train got the ball, everything's gone up in the air and it's just, you know, that's setting the tone for the game, isn't it? Against, they've got better players than you, they're earning more money than you. You've got to upset them, Joe, you know How much does that have a, have a bearing in it, the money? For, because I, I remember last year, the guy um, who played in midfield for Arsenal, he's now, he's at Hertha Berlin, I can't remember his name, it's terrible me, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, he had a go at the Brighton players and... Uh, oh, is the there Gwendozi, is there is a bear in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Gwendozi. So, is there a bear in there, Kev, with that as a player that you think, yeah, like fuck you, you, you're getting paid this, you're gonna, you're gonna earn that fucking money today? Not really. I, for me, it was never really about the money. I think you know, paid pretty well, not as well as Joe probably, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're just on the pitch. Kevin <laughs> Davies could be pretty. Brutal off it. <laughs> I'm glad I'm 300 miles away from Kevin not having to play against him anymore. I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, Do you know what I would say? Can I just stop? <laughs> just to jump back quickly with Eric Kev. When we used to play against Kev, like, we, I met, I, all these things coming back to me, and I remember because of the way he played, he's so competitive. He fought for everything. Like, hence the reason he got fouled or they got, you know, he's hustle and bustle. And he was a quality player. You don't play that many games without having great technical play. But he was such a competitor. So it often was in the games we play against. If you got into the ref earlier, I remember saying to the ref a couple of times, listen, be careful of him. Do you know what I mean? Like, being a bit slippery, I was. Like, he's got, first tackle, I'm, first tackle, he'd set the tone, it'd go up. And if you got the free kick and Kev got booked or got like, you know, you, you know what I mean? It's all you're them little gamesmanship with the referees. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, so, yeah. so like, I, going back to what Matt, the Man United thing, Fergie was the cleverest of all of them. He was, yeah. So he knew the threat that Kev imposed. And if he would have allowed him to impose his game, the ref would have allowed him to be physical, then it's a real long night. But if the, I know. like, if Kev, Kev would have played in the Champions League, he, like, or, or international football, he'd have had to have adjusted the game and he would have done because he's quality. But you couldn't have played the Premier League during the sort of the noughties, the late nineties and the noughties. It's a different beast to it was now. I've been at a few I've been at a few functions with Fergie and stuff and he's been moising all the managers there and it's how you yeah. doing, how you doing? Fergie just walks past me all the time. He's really? Like, oh yeah. So, <laughs> is there still is this because that's that's yeah. crazy that so because so obviously there there was a bearing, but it still continues now. There's, it's still not water under the bridge. I saw him, yeah, yeah. We've got good friends who 
the friends of his and stuff, and he's like, don't speak to me about that boy you know, kind of thing. And, <laughs> uh, right, listen, I, I, you know, we, we had to do what we had to do to try and win. I think, you know, there were, of course, there was one or two tackles, you know, that, you know, they have to happen, don't they? You know, it's kind of, that's the way it goes. But uh, he was, like you say, Joe, he, was the, he put something in the press the week before, the referee's got to be strong. You know, just, to, just yeah, and it, it protects his players. You go into Old Trafford and you have to take it down a notch, don't you? Because you know you're going to end up getting yourself sent off or something. So, Do you wear that as a bit of a badge of honour, Kev? Because it's like, it's a number of years after that, after sort of like you'd have played against him. And like, you've like had such a, I mean, mate, you think of Alex Ferguson, arguably the greatest manager that the Premier League's ever seen, right? And he's still in this, you still got cause him enough of a headache for him still to be like, um, no, he's still well. <laughs> like, there's like, there's not many people who he's still like, like that about. That must be, that's a hell of an accolade in a sense. Uh, well, yeah, we'll that is, wear that with pride. Wear that with pride. You say about um, England, because you got an England call out, it was quite late, wasn't it, in your, was that, but that was under talking to managers. So this is one that Joe's, Joe is, one of my favourite things, actually. Joe's quite out- outspoken about this guy, Fabio Capello. Yeah. Um, so I you're 33. I, mm, I heard Joe talking about the breakfast one. I had the same thing going down the first morning and no butter for the toast. And the, the chef's like, you're not allowed it, you're not allowed it. I'm like, what, you know, put Nutella on it or something. I'm like, oh, I don't know, you know. It's kind of... And listen, I only had the one week of it. You must have hated the weeks that it was like a military camp, wasn't it? It was kind of everyone regimented. I'm going to get up for dinner until all the captain gets up and it's in your rooms. <sighs> but, you know. Like, has it worked with international football? Well, this is actually a bigger question as well for you, Joe, I guess, and this is a thing I find interesting. As an England fan, I travel, watch England. Like, when you sit together and you come together and, like, as clubs and stuff, and, like, Kevin, you, you're coming in there and Ashley Cole's there and you might have knocked Ashley Cole. You've had, you know, you say about... Do those club rivalries, do they sort of, like, spill into England quite a bit? Or That's a good question. We got, I got asked this all the time and... At the time, I didn't feel it because, I mean, you know me, I I was very much, I'd mix with everyone. But now looking back at it now, there was definitely, any work you go to, you you tend to gravitate to people you enjoy being around or you know you've got history. And that's the same with football and footballers. So it's, it's normal for it to be clubs. But now I'm looking back, the rivalries were so intense, Chelsea and Manchester United Mm. and Liverpool, it was fragmented. And that's, I think, the strength in this team is they're so spread out. You've got the Man City boys and the Liverpool boys, but I watch them after the games now. And whatever the result, they're doing the, that, the soft, the, you know, the talking with Vine and Mal, mm. you know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. hugging and kissing. And, you know, I, I was watching the game the other day and someone, I think it was the Chelsea game, and, and Rashford's run over and he's run into the stand and looked like he might hurt himself. And then as Pulaqueta was like, all oh, right, you're right, mate, you're right, mate. I'd have been going, oh, good, and I hope you've dirt yourself. Do you know what I mean? We <laughs> was a lot nastier. Yeah. We was just nasty. It was a not. We was a nastier sort of more confrontational. Now the lads, is, I feel like it's more nice, and we're all better humans for it. Mm. It's better to be like that. But we looking back, going back to the England thing, I didn't think it at the time, but with hindsight, there was a lot of in, um, animosity that was probably underneath the surface. But I was just. To be honest, well, I was just enjoying myself. Who did you enjoy under most, lo- Joe? Which which manager? Who Sven. Did you enjoy- Matt, Sven. You'd have loved Sven. Sven was Sven got it. I, I've been openly critical, but Sven gave me most of my England caps, Kevin. He um, so you know you know any manager that plays you and likes you and you you like and I love and but looking back, we talked about the Gerard Lampard thing before in the pod. Tactically, we was very one dimensional, and you mm. can't be like that in the national football because we. We, you needed to hold, playing in that heat in tournaments, you need to hold the ball. So we needed a system better to c- control the possession. So I think his man management, probably like how you said Sam was, was spot on. And But tactically, I think we just fell down a little bit. But um, Capello just completely misread the situation. I think Capello come to England and he f- his perception of English footballers was we was going to turn up for England on the Monday or the Tuesday and we would have be going out on the piss for two nights. And do you know what I mean? We was all mad. We would all be overweight. I can just tell we come in because all these rules were just like ridiculous. Like the, you know, the no butter and the, you know, most of the lads by the time he come in were, were absolute model professionals. Mm. And it actually worked against him because the only thing to do, I felt, at the 2010 World Cup, 
was to go to the gym. There was nothing else to do. So the lads were getting so bored. Everyone was down the gym, lifting weights, all that. And I never went to the gym, as you could probably see. Um, <laughs> and uh, and like, I'm just like, it's all like, it was just so horrible to be around. It was just, you have to, in international football, you have to, I think it's important, you have to understand what it's like to, to be away and the different personalities and just try and get a, just try and get a happy camp. The players are great. Give them a good system, way of playing, and make it a happy camp, and you're halfway there. Harry Redknapp, that's the biggest... The, the fact that they didn't give the job to Harry in 2012 is probably the, the biggest mistake the FA's ever made. He would have yeah. been tailor-made for international football. Right. Now onto some serious business. Predictions times, Kev. This okay, is the big yeah, one. Yeah. So, frustratingly, yeah. JC, you won last week 2-1. Correct, correctly you. predicted Chelsea, good, Man United. Good run. good run. You said a draw. Yeah. And you said Man City would yep. beat West Ham. Let me, by the way, big shout out. And I, you know, but West Ham, I thought, put in a hell of a performance against Man City. Brilliant, mate. I did the game for BT, yeah, watched, and I, I thought watched. they was excellent. And I could, the, the, I couldn't praise them enough. And David, David, Kevin, and his staff, what a job they've done, and the nice. and the players mainly. Obviously, mm. it's always the players, but woof, yeah. you're right. Everything's going in the right direction, and West Ham fans should be excited. We're all excited. I can't wait. I mean, love to see. Imagine Barcelona coming there next <laughs> like London Stadium. Oh, mate, I'm fine. Just a I shame see... it ain't Upton Park, mate. Imagine Lionel Messi apartment. turning up at Upton Park oh, mate, back in the that. day with a chicken run. Mate, I had a season they could, in a like, chicken touch run. Him. Oh, oh mate. mate. Unbelievable. I love that. Um, right. Okay. Here we go. Predictions. Predictions. Kev, you're going to go first. This week, we're going to go Aston Villa versus Wolves. Aston Villa to finish in the top six is 10 to 3 with Coral. Right, Kev, what are you saying? Aston Villa Wolves. Ooh, Aston Villa Wolves. Is Grealish going to be back? So I think it's going to shade it. Villa. Villa to win. 1 0. Joseph, JC. Um, Aston Villa. I'm going to go with draw, Tom. You love these draws. Because the draws now. have done me well. I, I know, yeah, you, I'm loving you them now. Yeah. They don't want to upset anybody, yeah. does he? I'm going to go no. Wolves. I'm going to go Wolves. Okay, this is the big one. Derby games for you. This would be Kevin. Right, Man City versus Man United. Man City to win 4-0, 22 to 1. So also, now, this is mad. Man City, so we said this, a quadruple was 20 to 1 a couple of weeks ago. That was a Joe Cole price. Joe Cole made that price with Coral. Special <laughs> price there <laughs> from Coral there. Now the quadruple is I might just have cost eight. them a fortune if they do it. <laughs> 8 to 1 now. That's that my is. contract gone for next year. Kiss goodbye <laughs> to the podcast. <laughs> it's 8 to 1 now, Joe, with Coral. Yeah, well, I'm man, not surprised, mate. They look good. So, what are we saying, Kev? Man City versus Man United. <laughs> oh, they're on fire, aren't they? Um, got a feeling I'm going to go for a draw. 1-1. One, one. Mm. JC? Or a draw. Man City, mate. Yeah, I'm going to... Man yeah. City. I, I'm not going to even... Sensational team. ...dare to go against you on that. I'm going to go Man City. I just think, right, they're going to be you amazing. Be, yeah. Here we go, finally. West Ham versus Leeds. Coral odds. West Ham to finish in the top four is now nine to two. I never ever thought in I'd ever say, <laughs> say in that. March. That's, that's, <laughs> in March. Yeah, insane. Jeez. <laughs> um uh, Patrick Bamford to make the England squad for the Euros is now six to one. Like him actually. He, mm. I like Patrick Bamford. I think he's a good young player. He can finish. He yeah. can finish. Yeah, yeah. He, he feel that plays good as well. I think he, he could right. Mm. Kevin, West Ham leads. Home win. I think West Don't worry Ham... about upsetting him, Kev. No, Don't no, worry I'm, about not, him. I'm not going to burst the bubble. I think they're going to they're going to win that one. I think um, both teams to score. I'm going to go two one to wow. West Ham. He's gone proper in there, JC. West Ham. Watching them at the weekend, mate. It's, it, they're all wrong for for Leeds. Strong, solid. I think Leeds. I think I, I think it might be a tricky end to the season for Leeds as well. I think. I'm really impressed with what they've done, but I think West Ham will get the job done. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't even have to say it, West Ham for me. Um, <laughs> of course, mate. It, yeah. If and, West and Ham you know were what? playing Real Madrid, Brazil in 1970, and this Man City team all at the same time, big man will always back West Ham. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I, mean, I think we'll, I think there'll be a few goals in there as well. I, I, think, I think, yeah, I think over, over three goals, over four goals in that game for us, Sam, I think we'll, 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 it'll, be a, it'll be a cracker. Right. Anyway, listen, what what a honestly, what a chinwag, Kevin. It's been great having you on the show. I thoroughly enjoy and, and we've covered this is of all the ones we've done, Joe. We've covered <laughs> football, 
we've covered gardening and we've covered homeschooling. Um, me really? and JC are really... <laughs> and DIY. I wanted to give a shout out to the... I wanted to give a shout out to the mums and dads. I've got to give a shout out to them. But yes, hang in there. 8th of March. <laughs> I'm going to be doing the... I'm going to be doing the worm... <laughs> Up all the way up to the school gates with the kids. As a special treat, as a special <laughs> treat, wait. we will be putting up a video of JC doing the worm. Uh, um, <laughs> Kevin Davis has been an absolute joy chatting to you. Joe Carl, as always, Thanks, I'll Kevin. see you next week. You've been Legends. listening to All Legends. to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. We'll see you next time. You've been watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral.